Hey, this is Moo. Recently I've been doing a lot of gameplay recordings with commentary on Darklands, which is a DOS-based game from 1992. Great, great, great game. But when I was first trying to do some test recordings using DOSBox and OBS and Fraps and what have you, I kept running into problems with the audio of the game glitching out, uh, crackling, popping, and getting a bunch of anomalies. And this is related to how DOSBox plays back games, you know, once in a while you're going to get these these anomalies. So here I'm going to share how I got around this problem in case you are also thinking of doing some DOSBox recordings, or if you are already doing a playthrough in DOSBox and you're encountering these difficulties as well. So just very quickly, when you play something in DOSBox, once in a while you will hear a little pop or skip as I mentioned before and this is because of frame skipping or DOSBox having trouble maintaining sync. It's running inside an emulator inside your primary operating system and once in a while things get out of sync and DOSBox corrects for it in order to make your gameplay better. Uh, the problem is that if you do a direct recording using Fraps or OBS or whatever you're using, it's just recording whatever it's getting through your primary sound output and uh, your monitor so it will save those pops. I mean, it doesn't, know, it doesn't know the difference. Now, if you record in DOSBox using the record function, the record function actually compensates for these, and it will not record audio anomalies. Everything will sound and look just fine. The problem is that you cannot also do a voiceover at the same time. So the solution is to use a separate sound recorder and DOSBox's primary record function, and then lock the two of them together in an NLE. So this is the software that I use and which I recommend for making DOSBox recordings like this. First, of course, you need DOSBox. I actually use Defend Reloaded, which is a GUI front end. It allows for a lot easier tweaking of settings, especially for sound drivers, memory, CPU speed, etc. But you can use either. It doesn't matter. Uh, you need a sound recording program, and I like Audacity. It's free, open source, very well supported. Again, you can use whatever you want. I just recommend Audacity. Uh, you're going to need your preferred nonlinear editor. The nonlinear editor is the program that you use to set up, cut, tweak your videos uh, in order for exports so you can then upload it to YouTube. And this can be Adobe Premiere, Vegas Pro, Abby Synth, uh, you know, even like, you know, if you're hardcore, you would be using Virtual Dub or uh, GTK. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use Vegas, but it doesn't really matter. The only thing that uh, is kind of a hitch when you're using an NLE is that if you are using a 64-bit version, you are going to need a 64-bit version of the ZMBV codec. And the ZMBV codec is a zip motion block video. That is the codec that DOSBox uses when in recording, and there's not an official 64-bit version of it. Uh, if you're using a 32-bit editor, don't worry about it. It comes in DOSBox, and you can just load it from there. If you're using 64-bit NLE, you're going to have to grab an unofficial one, which I'm going to quickly show you how to do. It turns out that a very nice person on the Vogons forum hacked up a 64-bit version of ZMBV. It's unsupported, unofficial, but I've been using it perfectly fine with Vegas and Premiere and After Effects and any other video editor that I have tried with ZMB video. So I'll include the link down in the description along with the links to all the other software which uh, you should be grabbing. Just follow the instructions exactly as written on this post and you should not have a problem. But do remember that this is unsupported software. If you run into a problem uh, you could I suppose try to ask on Vogons how to fix it. I'm not sure if you'll get a response. I am the wrong person to ask for a fix because I have run into zero problems with this codec. So there you go. Now there's two basic approaches to doing a voiceover recording for gameplay video. Uh, you can do real time where you play the game and you're doing your commentary at the same time. If you're doing your recording with a webcam video of yourself, that's really the only way to do it and have it not look ridiculous. Uh, that presents a challenge because DOSBox will frame skip and eventually your voice is going to get out of sync with what's going on on the recording. You may have to do a little bit of clipping either way inside just to bring your voice back into sync. If you do your recordings in post, you don't have that problem. You just have to sync up the beginning of your recording, 
to the beginning of the video and then uh, link everything together in your NLE afterwards. I'm going to cover both of these methods. So this is the Audacity screen as you can see here. I have it set up to record from my preferred microphone and not the stereo mix because the stereo mix sound is going to be taken care of by my DOSBox recording. I'm using this just for the voiceover track and I'm going to be running them in the same time. So let's try that. So here's my Defend Reloaded. I'm going to launch Master Orion 2. And I may do an LP of this later. I've been kind of busy recently. So we start up DOSBox and I'm going to hit Control F5 and that starts the local recording. Now at this point I can start my narration. I can talk about the history of Simtex, all the great games that MicroPros used to make. Right now I'm just going to skip and jump into a new game. And here's a whole bunch of pretentious crap about how well I understand the game. I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to go into the custom after going through all the uh, various race choices, which I'm not going to do now because this is a sample recording. Uh, and now I'll go on really long-winded about all these choices and why I don't like certain ones and why I don't like other ones. And maybe I'll tweak them a little bit and explain why creative is so awesome and it's overpowered and used to cost less and creative repulsive was the flavor of the month until they patch it into cost eight picks. Uh, maybe I'll change my settings around a little bit, uh, thinking, oh, I'll save those two points for later when I get an evolutionary upgrade. And then I'll change my mind, and I'll just go back and, like, you know, select, reselect it. And now I'm going to move on. Here I'll come up with a funny name for my race, but I won't now. I pick white because it's the easiest to see on the map. Now I would kill this dead air by talking about the good old days and what a grognard I am. Then I'll probably, I probably would have renamed my star there. And now I'm going to go take a look at my planet. And I realize that there is an arid colony, so I could build a colony base pretty quickly. I don't want to waste my colony ship on that. But first I'm going to reallocate to two workers and two scientists so I can minimize the effects of pollution. And then I'll talk about the different things you can build. The first thing I'll build is a freighter fleet because I know I'm going to have to transport food. And then I'll set up a colony base uh, right after that. And then I'll go return to the main screen. And let's see. Well, since my race is really geared for bad scientists, I'm going to have to get the research laboratory as soon as possible. And now, let's see. Let's send some scouts out so we can find out what's nearby. That looks pretty decent. And I'm not going to launch the colony ship right away because I don't want it to get eaten by a space monster on turn two. That would really suck. And then I hit the turn button, and off go my scouts, and now I get some intel on some nearby planets. Hmm, there's a barren ultra poor, whatever, it's not very good. Probably taken anyway because I'm desperate, and a tundra poor. Hmm, alright. I'm sure there must be a better planet somewhere, so I'm going to send this scout, and I don't think that there's anything in range for this scout. So he's just going to sit there for now. I'm going to jump back into the planet screen... because I'm really nitty about my production, I realized that, well, I should really build outpost ships because when you put down an outpost first and then build a colony, you get a free marine barracks, which is very important if you're playing feudal or dictatorship. So I'm going to set up a couple of outpost ships so I can build one in my internal uh, system. Uh, then I'll build my freighters, build another outpost ship so I can start setting up for one of those other uh, world so I can colonize it. And I think that's going to do it. Now let's go back and tweak this a little bit. Yeah, forget it. We'll just take a look at the ship design screen. Uh, this is where I would go over all the options, none of which I'll use right now because I have no good technologies to improve on any of these ships. And yeah, then I guess I'll return. No problem. Now I awkwardly kill some time. And let's just stop the recording about there. So now I've jumped into my NLE to sync up these two tracks. Uh, as I uh, said before, I'm using Vegas for this. And this is actually the editing window for this very video. 
So what I'm going to do first is let me see, let me find that there. Uh, it's going to be down here. Go to find the ZMB vi uh, video, and that's going to be. Uh, you can just simply right click on the little box in Defend Reloaded, and it'll open up the. You know, it'll open up uh, the directory where all your saves are, and this is the one that I want. So I'm going to move that over to the other window, and I'm going to drag it up into an appropriate channel. I think it'll be here. Yeah, I'll put it down here. No, I can't. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm going to split this with the U key, so I can put this down here because I'm going to be at minus 10 decibels. And now I have to go find my commentary track, which luckily is right here. And I'm going to drop it up here. Uh, I'm going to have to cut out a bunch of this stuff in the beginning because this is all things when I was talking about how to launch Defend Reloaded. So my commentary starts somewhere around here. Let me just sync this up. Just jump around. I'm going to launch Master Orion 2. And let me yeah. do an LP of this. I'm just going to skip and. So we start up DOSBox, and I'm going to hit Control F5, and that, that seems about right. And jump. Now at this point I can start my narration, I can talk about the history of Simtex, all the great games that MicroProse used to make. Right now I'm just going to skip and jump into an easy. And here's a whole bunch of pretentious crap about how well I understand the game. I'm going to skip that for now, I'm going to go into the custom after going through all the... Uh, Let me resync this uh, here. Going through all the uh, various race choices, which I'm not sure about various race custom after going through all the. Now at this point, I can start my narration. I can talk about the headache. Right now, I'm just going to skip and jump into a new game. So that's about and correct for the start of, of this uh, sync track. Skip that for now. I'm go to custom after and. Um, might check choices. it a little bit later. Now, now I awkwardly kill some time. And yeah. Then I guess I'll return. No problem. And so I'm uh, happy with the sync there. I'm going to stop this here. I'm going to trim off the edges. And uh, then I'll show you how to deal with the various uh, skipping problems that you'll run into. So let's say that you've done your recording in sync. You're recording to Audacity WAV file at the same time that you're playing the game and recording using DOSBox, using ZBMV. And you wind up with some of these clicks and your audio is out of sync. And typically, the way that this happens is that your commentary track, which in this case is in the middle right here, is going to be longer than your gameplay track. The video for the gameplay is up here and the audio is down there. Uh, so you're eventually, as time goes on, your commentary is going to get later and later and later uh, to the point where it starts kind of not making sense, especially if you do a very long video. So here's how you fix it. You have to go uh, zoom in to your audio commentary track and find a spot where not much is happening, like let's say right there. You can see from the waveform that it's pretty flat. There's really nothing, nothing being recorded. This is a perfect place to do one of these edits. So you're going to take that spot, you're going to insert a split in however your NLE does it. In Vegas you just right click and split the track right there. And then you'll trim off the edges. Like that. Like that. And then you'll shove them together. And of course, you know, you'll play back to make sure that you didn't cause any weird artifacts. Now let's say that for some reason your problem is the opposite which I haven't seen, but I guess it's possible, where your commentary track is too short. So it's very similar. You just create a split, and then you move out your commentary track like that, so you lengthen that gap right in the middle there, and uh, check your playback to make sure you didn't stop in the middle of a breath or something, and uh, that will help you to get back in a sync. So that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope to see uh, some more cool DOS box, old school... PC game videos being uploaded in the near future. Take it easy.